qué pasó? I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. Oh, hi. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm going to keep rolling. Um, I want to remind you guys about how our contest is working out. So we started on um, yesterday evening's broadcast was module one. And if you guys saw, I posted my exit ticket question. I forgot to ask it in the video. So I posted the question for you guys in the comments. So hopefully you got a chance to answer that. Remember, we're going to bit.ly slash Tech Talk Week 2017 to enter the raffle for two $50 gift cards to TPT and to earn some professional development credit. So make sure that you guys are hopping on to bit.ly slash Tech Talk Week 2017. It's in the group in dozens of places. So you can find it right there. Make sure you hop on and enter the raffle. Um, you can also find links to all of our blog posts from this series. So I'm gonna show you really quick what that looks like. I can flip this around. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Thank you, Shira, for putting that in the comments. I really appreciate it. Um, this is the website, what it looks like. And you'll see that we've linked more of our episodes here. Um, so you guys can see a few more of the episodes are put up here. There's more coming out oh, more and more um, all week long. Hi, Kim. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. So don't forget to hop on and um, take a look at the blog posts. You guys can see mine is right here, ready to go, grading with my uh, macros in Google Docs. So feel free to take a look at that. Um, last night's blog post is here too. I actually managed to get the video from yesterday up on YouTube as well. So you guys can take a look right there. And then all the way at the bottom is where you're going to enter into your the raffle. So um, I'm not gonna go through all that with you. You guys get the point. So that's where it all is, bit.ly. Slash Tech Talk Week 2017. You guys can go back and visit every day that you watch a new module. So hopefully you guys will be doing that. Okay, so let's get down to business because I only got a few minutes to tell you guys all about macros. I want you guys to think about when you are grading, what are the things that you find yourself constantly writing over and over and over or typing over and over and over again on student papers? whether they're turning in a test or they're doing something in math or something in science, when you're making corrections, what is the thing that you find yourself constantly writing? For me as an English teacher, I feel like I'm always saying, your analysis is weak, go deeper, give me better evidence, things like that. Like kids are always just not giving me enough. And so here I am grading, <laughs> does it make sense? That's a good one, Shira. Yes, uh, writing complete sentences, that kind of stuff. And then you end up spending all this time writing the same thing over and over again or typing the same thing over and over again. It's exhausting and so not worth your time because clearly they're not changing their bad habits anytime soon apparently, which is uncool on their part. So enter macros. Has anyone heard of macros or know what these are? These are just in your settings in Google Docs. So basically when you guys know, when you guys type um, something in Google Docs, let's say you typed um, one slash two, you know how the computer will automatically turn that into one half? That's the program that we're gonna use, except we're gonna make it work for us, we're gonna make it work for grading. So this is the best thing out there that's like super, super low tech. So let me take you guys over um, to a fresh Google Doc and I'm gonna show you how it works. You're gonna be blown away. This is actually gonna be like the shortest broadcast ever because I I'm just gonna show it to you and then you can just go do it. Like, it's gonna be that easy, all right? Okay, so here we go, ready? I'm just gonna make you wait in suspense. I'm just kidding, I can't find the button to push, okay. Okay, I found the button to push. Okay, so I'm on a blank Google document, so you guys can uh, pretend that there's a paper here, or an assignment of any sort here. What you're gonna do is make up your list of most commonly written phrases um, and, and have those ready for yourselves. Then you guys are just gonna go to Tools. Then you're gonna go to Preferences. And you'll get this screen. It just says Replace and then with. 
and it's gonna do automatic substitution for you. Yeah, right. So let's say, um, what did you say? What was one of, let me go back to one of your funny ones. Oh, avoid first person. Okay, so maybe you wanna say, um, let's see, we can call it avoid first person. So now my code is AFP, whatever you wanna call it. And then over here, I will wanna replace that with avoid first person. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say, that sounds good. Um, and I'm gonna hit okay at the bottom. Okay, so now whenever I write A, F, P, avoid first person, my computer automatically types avoid first person. The end, broadcast over. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, that's that's how simple it is. So all you need at this point is your list of commonly typed phrases and that's, you know, different teacher to teacher. Um, I know it's so easy. It also works in the, um, so it also works if you do it. Um, I usually am using this in suggesting mode, um, which is really nice. And so it will be, the kids can see that it's you, you know, let's see, I could change this here. Let's see, avoid first person, right? And it will do it in suggestion mode as well. Um, it will also do it in the comments. If you were to make a comment, I could do it over here. Sorry guys, I'm at a really wobbly table. I always pick the wobbliest one. Avoid first person. Okay. Woo! Sorry about that. All right. I think that's just me, um, being, a, being wobbly. Um, but maybe, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it only works in the suggestions. I can't at this point, it's like so funny. I haven't created anything in so long. But you've definitely got it in suggestion mode. Uh, maybe not in the comments, but definitely, definitely in the doc itself. So, I know. Okay, thanks, Shayna. I appreciate it. Yeah, I just, I just am realizing that now. I haven't, um, I haven't messed with it in a while since we've been out of school for so long. So, yeah. So you can at least use it in suggestion mode, which is great. Or even at the very end, if you're like kind of want to collect your comments at the end and kind of do your holistic ones. I feel like the comments I leave anyway in the comments section are usually the more specific ones. So maybe if your plan is to leave specific comments in the comment boxes, but then kind of like the overall like common errors, just listing those at the end end easy peasy um, or even just as you go in suggestion mode I think that that's a really easy time saver for you um, and again it would I would only use it for the ones that are the most common the most common errors the rest of it you're gonna have to pretty much grade the same way you were before but um, that's really it it is it is definitely a, a <laughs> it's like a smartphone marketing trick totally so um, I don't really have anything additional to share with you other than that like little hack so I hope that that one little hack is not gonna flood your brain with too many like things on your to-do list but one thing that will help you cut down on your grading time for sure so my